All right, guys. Um, let's start this next session on sketching. Now you have two choices. You can either listen to this or you can just download the PowerPoint presentation itself on this assignment and read over on your own. Hopefully you'll enjoy listening to it, though, as I'll, I talk you through it. What we're going to talk about are different types of drawings. We have 2D illustrations of a 3D object. That's what you're working on. You're going to take a 3D object and you're going to find out a way of putting it on just a plain piece of paper. So how's that going to work? So there are different ways of doing that. One is to show three faces of an object in one view. See three different sides of it. You're going to learn to provide a realistic view of that object. And here's two different ways that you're going to learn to draw. One, isometric. The other is perspective. So let's talk about those for a little bit. Isometric. So isometric actually means equal measure. Right here, equal measure. If you look at this, this is one cube and it's perfectly square. So it has three adjacent faces. So we see a face here, here, and here. And these all converge into a single point. So the edges at one point will appear to be 120 degrees. Look right here, 120, 120, 120. While the other one from the horizon is 30. So here's the horizon down here. And we're going to have 30 degrees from here, 30 degrees from here. And this gives us an isometric view of this one cube. Now, each isometric cube has some different measurements that I'll ask you. So this is the height, the width, and the depth. And this is a drawing. Now, you may look at this drawing and go, wow, this is a good drawing. There's no way I could make this. But start to look at the drawing as far as the shapes go. That right there is just a rectangle. And then we have another measurement here, another small rectangle here. It's built up of small circles, rectangles, squares, all put together to form this one piece, this little clip right here. Um, what I want you to do is be taking notes during this time. You should have written down isometric means equal measures, and then go and sketch this out in your notebook. This little sketch right here that says 20, 20, 20, 120, and then 30 and 30 down here. This is a little more of what you might sketch in your books just on the fly if you're designing a seat. And we'll come back to the seat a little bit more, but you can tell the legs aren't exactly even, but you can definitely tell this is a chair. But this is an isometric drawing. You can see that you equally see all the sides. Let me give you an example. You think, why do I need to do an isometric drawing? This right here, um, Silas Tupper, Earl Silas Tupple, Tupper. Now, you may recognize this name, Tupper. You've heard of Tupperware before. Now, we, we tend to have plastic that we just pop together and throw in the trash when it gets gross. But Tupperware has been around for a long time. And what he did is he came up with this idea of a syllable airtight container. And here's how he did it. He came up with this lip right here that gave us specific measurement on how it clips together and how it seals. And he did this all with an isometric sketch. He drew it out. Now, of course, the hands are a little different. But what we're looking at is this piece right here. And this is what you're going to work on. You can actually draw this with your own hands and then turn this into a patent office and get a patent on a design that you've created using nothing but a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. And that's hopefully what you'll come to. Now this next one we're going to say is more realistic towards what you would see. It's a perspective drawing and it offers the most realistic three-dimensional view. Uh, when you look at a painting and you think of a painting being in three dimension, it, it is a perspective painting. You think one part of the painting is closer to you, it looks like someone is further back. So this is realistic to your human eyes. And there are two different ways of making a perspective drawing. One is having one point, the other is having multiple points. Now let's take this one point perspective. It's simple to make, but it's kind of awkward. It doesn't look the same way that it would look if you were looking at a block in your hand. So the horizon line represents the horizon. The horizontal line represents the horizon. It has one vanishing point in the horizon and has a series of lines drawn from distinct points to the object. So let's talk about those. First off, horizon line. This is the horizon line. This is the vanishing point. Now look right here at this tape dispenser. You can see how the lines are all going to one vanishing point, which means the front of the tape dispenser 
is larger than the back of the tape dispenser. So in a, a 2D drawing, obviously, that's not what it would be in real life. They would be the same size. But because it's drawn this way, it looks like the front of the tape dispenser is closer to you. All right, let's look at this one. This looks like an old-style iPod. But you can tell the vanishing points out here on the horizon. But it looks like it's getting smaller as if it's moving away from you. But in actuality, it's a 2D drawing, and it's standing up like this on a piece of paper. We'll do some more stuff in class. Some, there's some really cool um, 3D and perspective drawings that people have done, and we'll look at those as well. So two-point perspectives. Okay, a step-by-step -step procedure. Let's talk about this. You have two points here. This is the uh, horizon line. And then these are the two different vanishing points. So rather than it focusing on one spot, this printer is getting smaller up here and then smaller in this direction, which means it looks like we're looking at it from the side of the printer, although it's still a 2D drawing on a piece of paper. Multi-view or orthographic drawings. Write this down. Orthographic drawings. These show two or more two-dimensional views of a three-dimensional object. They provide the shape, description of an object, and when combined with dimensions, serve as a main form of communication between designers and manufacturers. That's what you need to add. Designers and manufacturers. This is what you would send to a company to have something built or made. They would get this piece of paper. They would see this drawing here, which is what type of drawing? You're going to answer that, write it in your book, we'll talk about it in class. And then you have three different perspectives here. Is this the top, the side? Is this the front? You're going to have to learn that as well. So in class, we'll talk about which of these is the front, side, and top view or top perspective of this drawing. In a company, they would get this in, they would look at it, and they'd know exactly how to duplicate this piece, either for a car, mechanism, even maybe a lawnmower or a vacuum. Chair. This chair you saw at the very beginning. But you can see that they also drew a top view a front view, and left and right side. Now the measurements aren't there, so you wouldn't be able to recreate it exactly, but it gives you an idea of the type of chair they're building. Well, personally, I wouldn't send this chair because it has no braces between the legs, and it wouldn't hold a, let's just say, a, a big person. Especially it wouldn't hold one of you guys tilting back and leaning in it and snap the legs right off. But what I want you to think about is the design. You could draw this in your books. And don't worry about drawing it right now because you're going to sketch your own drawings. All right, that concludes everything for today. It's not a long presentation, but hopefully you've taken notes over each part. And we're going to answer some questions about the different views that we're looking at. And you're actually going to draw some of these yourself tomorrow during class.